When I ripped through the incredibly bullish presentation from Adobe last night after a truly blowout quarter, I found myself shaking my head about the prospects for the brick and mortar retailers in this country who really can't avail themselves of Adobe for their, <laughs> their retail stores at all. You just can't compete against digital merchants if those merchants are armed with Adobe. I don't know how you do it. As CEO Shantanu Narayan explains, we are in the golden age of creativity, which is stoked from grade school with Adobe Spark, which is the lowest end, and it's upending everything as these kids grow up and master e-commerce. No wonder Adobe stock rocketed $14, uh, $14 or 5%. It's a $140 billion company in wake of that colossal quarter. Think about a typical enclosed mall for a moment. There are anchors like a Macy's or a Nordstrom or other department stores that are now too small to mention on air, but have tens of thousands of people working for them. Then you've got a bunch of gaps at Abercrombie's, maybe some one-off clothing, a jewelry company, a Toomey, Williams-Sonoma, Chico's, some L Brands operations, as well as the Oodle, Flotsam, and Jetsam. When I go through the Adobe conference call, reading through it on Adobe Reader, of course, I see I can use their software to recreate all the best parts of the mall by finding what the customer really wants and then presenting to them online the best way to shop because you don't have to go anywhere or speak to another human being or try something on in a dressing room. You can try it on at home, order two of them, send the wrong one, send the one you don't like back. Designers can make more creative merchandise than what's in the mall. Then target the people who want those products much better than a mall can. Again, using Adobe, figure out how to scale up the business rapidly using Adobe. Cheaper, faster, better, and of course, more creative with far less inventory risk. Expensive salespeople hobbling rents. In this new world, I really do pity the brick and mortar retailers. I don't know what I'd do if I were stuck running a department store. We have all these big brands that are basically indistinguishable from everything else. It's not like this is a new story. Some of the department stores are indeed on their last legs, and even the better ones are struggling. Macy's is trying hard and has a terrific showroom in its main store in Manhattan, but hasn't been able to demonstrate that its model can scale to dividend. I have no idea what the heck Nordstrom's doing, except that it's spending a lot of money. Gap? When I think about the gap in this environment, I, I imagine stuff that's made overseas that ends up in a landfill. L Brands, with the exception of Bath and Body Works, everything L Brands makes is easily replaced by something online that's cheaper, more creative, and more anonymous and definitely cooler. Its very existence is under attack by designers using Adobe or Wix or Shopify to pick off customers. As for Abercrombie, have you looked at the cool clothing sites for uh, teenagers these days? I might bet half of them are designed and monitored using Adobe. The others, you know what, only William Sonoma, which was initially a member of Catalog Store, seems to have done a good job of making the leap to the web. Well, we recently spoke to Laura Albert, the CEO, and she explained to us that she has the edge on the other housewares retailers because she isn't really one of them. Not with her powerful omnichannel business. It, it, they're more offline than on. I mean, online than off. And that's really smart. So go read the Adobe call. Think about what's being unleashed here. Recognize that when Shantanu speaks of the golden age of creativity, he means a golden age where everyone has their own electronic push cart that looks every bit as fancy as something from Tiffany or Neiman, but is cheaper and in many ways than, uh, better than what Target or even Walmart can sell. It's insane what's happening. But it is happening, people. And even after a spectacular 5% run today, I think the stock of Adobe is still, still the way to play it. Let's go to Mark in New Jersey, please. Mark. Booyah, Jimmy. My Booyah, question Mark. is about Square. The yeah. Square Cash app was currently outpacing Venmo, along with the recent run-up in the stock price from the low 60s, as well as being up about 30% for the year. Do you think all the good news is baked in, or do you still no, think No, I don't. I mean, we've got to be careful about it. There's an analyst who keeps saying that they're pacing. I mean, look, they're doing a little faster growth in some parts of Venmo than others, but i got to tell you, they both can coexist. Many people, including me, got freaked out of PayPal like at $100 when we kept seeing those reports that Square's going faster. They both can live, and they both ah. are buys. All right. Adobe is upending the entire retail world, people. You've got to read that conference call. Because as Shantanu says, it's the golden age of creativity. Much more made money at When I spoke to Slack way back in 2015, it was a private company, 1.25 million active users. Today, that number sits at 10 million on the eve of its first day of direct, direct IPO listing. I'm telling you if the company's growth can continue. Then, with more businesses folks on their, on their online footprints, can a company like Wix help you score some clicks? I'll surf with the CEO. And all your calls rapid fire in tonight's edition of The Lightning Round. So stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call 
at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.